A coalition of 80 Nigerian civil society organizations is worried that insecurity may affect the conduct of the 2023 national elections. It is calling on the federal government to ensure that the military is fully empowered to subdue terrorism. Well, the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room at a briefing in Abuja made the observation over the state of the nation and incidents that have taken place in the first and second quarter of the year 2022. The CSOs are asking that the entire security architecture of the country be rejigged by President Muhammadu Buhari to combat the worrisome expansion of insecurity across the nation and for citizens to put their state governors to task and demand accountability for their actions or inactions. The state of insecurity in the country has deteriorated so much that most parts of the country are now threatened by non-state armed men with various nomenclatures like the bandits, is it Boko Haram, Islamic State of West Africa, kidnappers, and Onongo on men. So situation room calls, you know, therefore, is making the following calls. The entire security architecture of, of the country should be rejected by the president, by President Mohammed Buhari to combat the worrisome expansion of insecurity in the country. The service chiefs should be removed as we have not seen the difference between the time they have been appointed or be equally given more powers because what we see is political interference in the security apparatus. Well, joining us now in the studio is the co-convener, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room, James Ugochuku. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Newsnight. Now, let me take you up first of, I mean, what are exactly are the indices and the factors that have come together to, for Situation Room uh, to raise concerns? Is it based on empirical evidence that truly the 2023 elections could be, uh, you know, jeopardized if things continue the way uh, they are right now? If you flash your mind back to 2015, it's quite that the election was uh, postponed due to insecurity. Mm -hmm. And what we are having now is even worse than what happened in 2015. For the first time, we are having the federal capital territory being threatened by this insurgent to the point that the first uh, family or the president is being threatened. You know, they have the audacity of saying that they want to come and kidnap the president. So how bad can it be? We saw the jailbreak that happened in uh, Kuje prison and no arrest has been um, made so far. And uh, looking at the brigade of guard being attacked, not once, twice. The brigade of guard were attacked were on their way to Casina. And they, they threatened to kidnap the president. And in less than 72 hours, they attacked the brigade of guard, killing some of uh, our soldiers. And the brigade of guard, for information, is the elite force, the last guard, as far as security of this country is concerned. So this kind of uh, issues give us concern as uh, civil society, because uh, as the election is coming closer, we are not even talking about some territories that have been occupied by this insurgent. How are those people going to vote? I'm looking at some communities in the uh, in Niger State, for instance, that are completely under the, the the control of Boko Haram. They are collecting taxes. They are giving the farmers protection to go to farm and come back and all that. How are those people going to vote? How is that they going to get their ballot boxes and their um, men to that place? We are looking at uh, uh, um, insurgents activity and banditry in Zamfara, you know, Kaduna. I just heard in the news now. On, in, during the weekend in Bininguari, 50 people were kidnapped. How do you think that the people there will have the confidence to, okay. you know, sit there and wait to come and do any election? Mm -hmm. So that's what is giving us this worry. It's very All clear. Right. But uh, just, I mean, I'm not holding brief, but uh, we've seen reaction from the armed forces. The Brigade of Guards also killed uh, scores of terrorists in their attack, although we lost soldiers in it. Um, but let me ask you, like you rightly said, it's not the first time elections will be postponed if it ends up, ends up be, being postponed. In 2015, it was postponed for six weeks. In 2019, it was postponed by a week, five hours to elections opening. So what really are the fears? Is it not better to have a safe and secured environment than elections? Uh, what is your fear? That's what I really want to know. Uh, how does this affect the credibility of the elections if we have to postpone? Our fear is that if this persists, 
a lot of Nigerians will not be able to have the confidence to participate in the electoral process. And why we are raising this alarm, which we raised sometime in May, is because we still have about six months window before the election. Mm -hmm. So we are asking the security to step up their campaign against these terror groups. Mm -hmm. You know, they are surrounding us. They know where they are. Uh, I just had um, the person that is released there now, you know, talking about how they are moving about, buying something within the community and all that. Where is our intelligence uh, community? You know, with this intelligence, they should be able to go to the, take the war to the terrorists. They shouldn't be waiting for the terrorists to attack them first. Yeah. So if we don't do this and the election is getting closer, these guys will become very emboldened to the point that they will even tell you that election will not hold. Remember that their campaign is to have uh, their own Islamic state in uh, Nigeria. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. Now, that campaign is still what they are carrying out, you know. And uh, if that is not stopped, they can say, okay, we don't even want election to hold again in this country. And uh, how would they do that? By creating more terror and preventing okay, so people from you know, coming out to participate. Right. You're, you're also calling on government to sack <laughs> the service chiefs. I mean, this government did it before. Uh, and from all indication, it doesn't seem to have uh, solved uh, the problem. And part of what you're, you know, the solutions you're putting forward, you're saying citizens should uh, take up their governors, you know, uh, put them on their toes. E exactly in, in what ways are you recommending that the people, the citizens can do that at the state level? You know, as How much can the governors do? You know, as it is now, uh, we are heading towards another election. And uh, what Nigerian politicians are very good at doing is uh, romanticizing people's uh, sheepish emotion. You know, as we speak now, what is uh, what they are, the game they are playing now is that, okay, this person is from a particular part of the country. This person is picking uh, uh, a particular religion. religious uh, uh, ticket and all that. These are not the issues Nigerians should be paying attention to. You know, we've gone through this path over and over again, and as we are heading towards 2023, what we are asking Nigerians to do is to look at issues that are affecting them. They should not be waiting for the politicians to come and tell them what they want to do for the people. The people should come up and say, this is what we want from you as a people. In your community, you have your own challenges. In your own community, in my own community, mm -hmm. we have different challenges. So you shouldn't be looking at who becomes the president. Because whoever becomes the president will not come and fix the bad road in your community. Mm -hmm. It's the work of your governor. It's the, it's the constituency project of your uh, senator the that has been coming to be sharing a machine and shovel and cutlass <laughs> and all that. <laughs> so we should be looking at the people, okay. getting wiser this time around, and asking them what they want from them by drawing up a community charter of demand is a document that you can produce and submit to them that this is what we want from you as citizen and you should sign it as a social contract so that after 100 days or 300 days in office they are not performing they can activate the recall process as provided in the constitution to recall them from from office okay uh, yeah. Six months uh, is a long time from now. Thank you so much, co convener and Andrea Civil Society Situation Room, James Ugochuku, for being on the news tonight. You're